Let's get weird into it. Number 10. The 10,000 Year Hangover Imagine you're trying to leave a note for someone. Not a post-it note for your roommate about finishing the milk, but a serious life-or-death warning. Now, imagine that roommate won't be home for another 10,000 years. That is the exact problem a bunch of very smart people in lab coats have been wrestling with for decades. We've created nuclear waste, the most toxic, long-lasting garbage in the history of the universe. Some of this stuff, like plutonium-239, has a half-life of 24,100 years. That means it takes 24,000 years for it to become just half as deadly as it is today. Our task is to design the universe's deadliest do-not-touch sign, and it has to work for a time span that makes the entire history of human civilization look like a long weekend. 10,000 years ago, humans were just figuring out that farming was a pretty neat idea. The pyramids of Giza didn't exist. The English language was 9,000 years away from even starting to form. Every empire you've ever heard of, the Romans, the Greeks, the Ottomans, would rise and fall within this time frame. Everything we know, everything we are, will be dust. But our nuclear trash? It'll still be there, humming away with its silent, invisible poison. So, how do you communicate extreme danger across a chasm of time so vast that our descendants might not even be recognizably human? They might not have our languages, our symbols, or even our biology. They might be treasure hunters, or innocent farmers, or some kind of post-apocalyptic mole people just looking for a good place to dig a new tunnel. This isn't just an engineering problem. It's a psychology problem, a linguistics problem, and an art project from the deepest circle of hell. Number 9. The useless sign. So, the most obvious answer is a sign, right? Just write it down. Big letters. Danger. Poisonous radioactive waste. Do not dig here. Will cause horrible death. Seriously. Slap it on a slab of granite and call it a day. Except, what language are you going to write it in? English. In 10,000 years, English will be as understandable as ancient Sumerian cuneiform is to you right now. It will be a dead, forgotten whisper. Scholars have shown how much languages can drift in just a few hundred years. The English of Chaucer's time is barely readable to a modern speaker. Now multiply that by 20. So, maybe you use multiple languages. The UN's six official languages, maybe a few others for good measure, but that assumes any of them will survive, or that future linguists will even have a reference point to translate them. You're basically handing them a Rosetta Stone where all the languages on it are equally dead. And what about the words themselves? The concepts might not even translate. The word radioactive is a modern scientific invention. To a future society that has lost that knowledge, it might mean nothing. Even a simple word like danger could be misinterpreted. An archaeologist today who finds a tomb with warning, do not enter. Great curse inside, written on it, doesn't run away screaming. They call their university, get a grant, and kick the door down with a camera crew. A warning to one civilization is an invitation to another. The team that worked on this, the Human Interference Task Force, which is a real and terrifyingly named government group, realized that any written message could backfire spectacularly. They might dig it up because they think you're promising them a buried treasure of highly valued material. Whoops. Number 8. The Symbol Factory. Okay? Fine. Words die. But pictures are forever, right? A universal symbol. Something so primal, so intuitive, that any being with eyes will understand it. Let's start with the current international symbol for radiation. The trefoil. That little three-bladed fan thing. You see it, and you think danger. But do you really? Or have you just been trained by decades of movies, video games, and safety posters to associate it with glowing green goo? There's nothing inherently dangerous about its shape. It's an abstract design. To a future culture, it could look like a flower, a religious icon, or the corporate logo for a long-dead fast food chain. So you need something more visceral. What about the skull and crossbones? That's gotta work. It's a literal picture of death. Except, is it? For centuries, pirates used it to mean, we're about to steal your stuff, but it's also kind of a fun adventure. Today, you can buy it on a baby's onesie. It's a punk rock logo. It's the symbol for a bottle of poison, but it's also just cool. A future society might see a field of skulls and crossbones and think they've found the holy burial ground of a legendary biker gang. The task force actually surveyed people to see what images best conveyed danger, and the results were a mess. One of the proposed symbols was a stick figure with its hands up in a gesture of repulsion, but that could just as easily be interpreted as praise or worship. They came up with a new set of graphics, called the semiotic layer, 
that showed people getting sick and dying after touching a glowing barrel. But again, this relies on a specific narrative structure. Is it a warning or a historical record of a tragedy? Or maybe a sacrifice? The meaning is all in the context, and in 10,000 years, there is no context. Number 7. Landscape of Thorns What if the message wasn't on the land, but the message was the land? This is where the ideas start to get truly bizarre and brilliant. The goal here is to create something called hostile architecture. You're not just building a fence. You're sculpting the very earth into a physical scream of, stay away. One of the most intense proposals was the landscape of thorns. Imagine a massive square of land, miles across, where the entire surface is covered in enormous jagged spikes of black granite or concrete, some as tall as a person. They're packed so densely that you can't walk or drive a vehicle through them. They're angled in all directions, creating a chaotic, menacing, and utterly useless piece of real estate. There's no pattern, no beauty, just a sense of wrongness. The psychology behind it is fascinating. It's designed to trigger a primal fear. Your brain is wired to avoid sharp things and chaotic landscapes. A field of giant thorns doesn't look like a place where you'll find water, food, or shelter. It looks like a place where nature had a very, very bad day. It's not telling you a story. It's giving you a feeling. It's a geological restraining order designed to make your subconscious gut scream, nope, long before your conscious mind even has a chance to get curious. It's an unnatural scar on the planet, a wound that refuses to heal, silently communicating that something terrible is buried underneath. Number six, menacing earthworks. If the landscape of thorns is too subtle for you, how about we just make the place look like it was designed by a civilization of supervillains? This category of ideas called menacing earthworks uses massive, unnatural landforms to create a sense of dread and foreboding. Imagine giant, sharp-edged earthen walls, hundreds of feet tall, surrounding the site. Not smooth, gentle hills, but impossibly steep. Black berms that look like they were sliced out of the ground by a giant razor. They could be arranged in a maze-like pattern that leads nowhere. Disorienting. And frustrating. Anyone who tries to enter. The very shape of the land would feel aggressive, like a crouching beast. Another idea was the forbidding blocks. Giant, perfectly square cubes of dyed black concrete, each the size of a house, scattered randomly across the landscape. The sheer unnaturalness of their perfect geometry in a natural environment is meant to be deeply unsettling. It's a signal that this place is not part of the natural order. It's something else, something artificial and wrong. The whole point is to make the site feel cursed, like you've stumbled into the ruins of a dark and powerful empire that worshipped pain. It's architecture as a weapon of psychological warfare, designed to make future explorers feel like they are trespassing on something ancient and evil. It's not a warning, it's a threat. Number five, the black hole. Of all the architectural ideas, this one might be the most terrifyingly elegant. It's called the black hole. You pave over the entire multi-square mile disposal site with a massive slab of black basalt or dyed concrete. Pure, featureless, light-absorbing black. Why is this so effective? Because it's a violation of nature on a colossal scale. Nothing grows there. It's hot to the touch as the black surface absorbs the sun's rays, creating a shimmering, oppressive heat that makes the air itself feel sick. It would be a dead spot on the planet, visible from space. Imagine you are a future human part of a nomadic tribe or an agrarian society. You travel the land, following the seasons, reading the signs of the earth, and then you come to this. A vast, empty plain of black nothingness that literally cooks under the sun. It offers no food, no water, no shelter. It is the physical embodiment of emptiness and sterility. Your instincts, honed over millennia to seek life, would be repulsed. It wouldn't just be visually intimidating. The heat would make it physically painful to cross. The lack of any features would make it disorienting. It's a structure that communicates its message through pure sensory deprivation and hostility. It says life ends here, turn back. Number four, the Rosetta Stone from hell. Okay, so maybe the future humans are smarter than we give them credit for. Maybe they ignore the scary architecture and push forward, driven by that classic human cocktail of greed and curiosity. We still need to give them a message they can actually read. This is the idea of the information center, the plan is to build a small, partially buried room in the center of the site, and maybe several smaller ones around the perimeter. Inside, you carve the warning onto massive stone tablets, like a Rosetta Stone from hell, and you do it in every way imaginable. You start with the basics, 
pictograms, a series of cartoon panels showing a person digging, finding the glowing stuff, getting sick, and dying. Simple, primal, but that could be misinterpreted, so you go deeper. You carve the same message in every major language currently on Earth. You include star charts showing the position of the stars on the day the site was sealed, a universal timestamp. You include the periodic table of elements, highlighting the radioactive ones. Then you get really clever. You include information at multiple levels of scientific understanding. One wall might explain the danger in terms of atoms and radiation for a society that has rediscovered physics. Another wall might explain it in terms of alchemy or evil spirits for a society that has regressed into magical thinking. You're essentially writing a Yelp review for your nuclear waste dump and translating it into every possible future paradigm. You're giving them the message in so many different formats, scientific, mythological, pictorial, that you hope at least one of them gets through their thick futuristic skulls. Number three, genetically engineered warning signs. This is where the scientists really took off their glasses, loosened their ties, and got weird. What if the warning system wasn't built, but grown? What if it was alive? The idea was to use genetic engineering to create plants or animals that would act as living Geiger counters. The most famous of these proposals is the so-called Raycat project. The idea was this. You genetically engineer a species of cat so that its fur changes color dramatically in the presence of radiation. Think about it. These cats would live around the site and everything would be fine. But if there was ever a leak, or if someone started digging and brought waste to the surface, the local cat population would suddenly start glowing green or turning bright blue, or whatever color you programmed in. Now, you just have to embed the meaning of this color change into future culture. How do you do that? You create folklore. You create rhymes, songs, and scary bedtime stories passed down through generations. If the kitty starts to glow, turn around and go, go, go. Or, do not pet the sapphire cat, for its touch brings endless sleep. The warning becomes a living myth a self-replicating piece of cultural software carried by an army of glowing guard cats, which, I have to admit, is the most metal solution to a nuclear waste problem I have ever heard of. Number two, the atomic priesthood. This might be the most famous, most debated, and most chillingly brilliant idea of them all. The problem with all these other messages, the buildings, the symbols, the texts, is that they are static. They are relics that can be misinterpreted or ignored. So, what if the message wasn't a thing, but a group of people. The proposal was to create a new man-made religion, an atomic priesthood. This would be an elite council of people, structured like a church, whose sole purpose for existing would be to preserve and pass down the knowledge of the nuclear waste sites for 10,000 years. They wouldn't even need to know the true scientific reason for the warning. The knowledge could be encoded in rituals, myths, and sacred texts that they would be sworn to protect. Imagine a secretive order of monks who perform annual rituals at the edge of a forbidden zone, they tell stories of gods who buried a terrible power in the earth, a power that must never be disturbed lest it unleash a plague upon the world. They would have a calendar, a hierarchy, and a set of laws, all centered around one commandment, thou shalt not dig. This priesthood would be designed to be resilient. If civilization collapses, their simple, powerful myths would survive. If society advances, the more complex scientific truths hidden within their sacred texts could be rediscovered. It's an insane, audacious plan to create a 400-generation-long conspiracy to protect the future from the past by turning science into superstition. Number one, the curse. So, what's the answer? Which of these terrifying, ingenious, or downright bizarre ideas do you choose? The truth is, you don't choose one. You choose all of them. The final consensus among the people who study this is that you need a layered system, a defense in depth for the timeline. You start with the hostile landscape the thorns, the black slab, the menacing earthworks, to scare off the casual intruder. This is your first line of defense, the primal gut punch of get out. Then, for those who press on, you have the symbols and pictograms, a second layer of more explicit, if still ambiguous, warning. And for the truly dedicated, the future archaeologists who get past all of that, you have the information centers, the Rosetta Stones from Hell, explaining the danger in every conceivable way. And maybe, just maybe, you have the whispers of a curse carried on the wind, a story told by the descendants of an atomic priesthood, or the owners of a color-changing cat. The ultimate message isn't just danger. It's a full-spectrum assault on the human psyche. It's designed to look and feel like a curse, 
a place so profoundly wrong, so thoroughly communicated as forbidden, that to violate it would feel like defying the will of the gods, the laws of nature, and the ghosts of your ancestors all at once. It's the idea that the only way to save the future from our poison is to make them terrified of us. And that's our time for today. More strange things are always coming, so I'll see you in the next one.